Hey guys. Um, it's been a while. Okay. Um, last time I uploaded a video was two months ago, and there's a big reason for that. Um, I'm gonna try to say this without crying. Uh, found out around mid to end of October that my dad had cancer again. Um, it was the second time that he had it. He was in remission for 11 years, I want to say. Um, he had intracheal lung cancer back in 2005, and at that time he was a paramedic. Um, he was a paramedic for 25 years. Um, in any way, continuing on with the story. Um, about a week and a half after we found out, um, they were gonna get hospice arrangements ready because he, the doctor said he had a month to a year to live, which wasn't very long. We had no idea when he was going to go. Um, at the time when he got his MRI done, uh, he had it in his bones, his liver, his whole lymphatic system. Um, and we didn't even have time to know the results for the brain scan to see if it was in his brain. Um, he, it was small-celled, so that's the most aggressive cancer there is. Um, and, uh, there was nothing we could do, even though he was going to try chemo the Monday after we found out, which we found out on a Wednesday. I don't remember the exact date. I'm just telling you a rough, like a roundabout story. Um, he was definitely, okay. He passed away. Sorry. He passed away November 1st, and, uh, we, he's, he always bonded to pass away at home, surrounded by family, but unfortunately, he didn't get that chance, um, he went in to get a med port put in for the chemo and med ports never worked for him um, he had two others when he had cancer the first time the first one exploded and the second one I can't remember what happened but he uh, just never had it easy with med ports when he got this last med port put in um, he started going into, he, his heart just was acting up and he went into AFib. Um, atrial, uh, I can't remember the exact name of it. Um, but he just wasn't doing good and his health went downhill really fast when that happened. And he never came home. Um... They put him on the ventilator, I think, a day after he was in the hospital because his breathing got bad, and he couldn't breathe very well on his own anymore, and they wanted to, my mom wanted to bring him home because, like I said, he always wanted to be home, surrounded by his family when he passed away. Um, unfortunately, 
that didn't happen. Um, hospice didn't have a doctor on call, so we couldn't have hospice come out and take care of him. And the doctors at McLaren, because he was at McLaren Hospital in Flint, Michigan, they said that he wasn't going to make it um, without the ventilator for very long. He made it about five hours, four or five hours, after he was taken off the ventilator. Um, and we all surrounded him at the hospital, sang his favorite songs, and listened to them. And I, I don't know what I would do without him being in our lives. Um, he definitely disciplined us kids. Because he loved us. And he told us what we needed to hear. It wasn't always nice, but everyone makes mistakes. He was only 58 when he passed. And his mother is still alive. My Grandma Bliss, uh, she's 87, and she was his, and he was her baby. He was the youngest out of three boys, and I can still remember the last time that he opened his eyes. He just kept saying, no, no. He didn't want to be at the hospital to die. He wanted to come home. But he couldn't. And my mom just sat right next to him the whole time and tried to stay strong for everybody. He died at 9.07 p.m. on November 1st. And, uh, a couple minutes before he passed, we could see on his monitor that his amount of breaths a minute were going down, and you could hear something called the death rattle. And if you don't know what that is, um, I, I can't explain it. Um, it's, it's too much. Um... But, I, it's just, it's been so hard since he's been gone. Um, and we had a military service because he was in the Marines and in the Army. Um, and the Marines were the ones that did the gun salute. And There's two cemeteries just down the road from us. And he's been the one down the road. Um, and he's close to home like he always wanted to. I'll never forget him. He saved a lot of people. He had a lot of good me we had a lot of good memories and we had some bad. I mean who doesn't? And uh yeah, I'm definitely gonna miss him. Um but yeah, that's one of the reasons why I haven't been uploading videos. Um also another reason I, my grandmother passed away. I was living with her for almost two years 
and I was taking care of her because she couldn't do much. I mean, she had so many disabilities that she just couldn't lift very heavy things, and she even had a hard time uh, lifting a bl simple blanket to put on her bed. Just a light one. Or going to the bathroom. I mean, it was literally like 10 feet away from her. And she would just have such a hard time breathing. When she came out and sat back down at her, at her desk. Well, a couple weeks before she passed. It was the 3rd of November that she came home. She wasn't ready to come home. Uh, she had a, um, a heart, an open heart surgery back on June 8th. And she fought for five months because she was doing so good and then she'd have a setback. Then she'd do really good and then she'd have another setback. She just kept going through the same cycle and we really thought that she was definitely gonna make it and then a couple days before she passed no it was a week sorry um, a week before she passed her health deteriorated bad and she had to go back into the hospital and i never seen her since because they had to put her back on the ventilator and all that stuff. Um, and she just came home because they, they had to, the doctors came in one day and said they had to do another heart surgery. And she told them no. She was ready to go home. She just was tired. I mean, she was 65. That was one of the oldest... She was one of the oldest people that lived that long in my family. On my biological mom's side. So... If you smoke, you need to stop because that could happen to you. That was one of the main things that caused her to have to have this surgery. Or that surgery was her smoking. She smoked for 50 plus years. I'll never forget that smile that she had. I'm sorry, I'm just out of words. I mean, every day that goes by, it some days are harder than others. I mean, that's with everybody, I guess. <clears throat> I wrote her a song, but I just can't play it very much, or I start crying. I've also been in and out of the hospital because my seizures have been occurring so bad that I had to be rushed to the hospital so they could do something about it. It's from all the stress. And I still live in her house. So it's definitely hard to see her stuff everywhere and I inherited her dog <laughs> he can detect when my seizures are going to start coming on and she always wanted him to stay home and right now it's hard for me to keep him I mean I'm getting paid once a month just to be able to buy his dog food and I gotta start saving up to get him to the vet because he's got other things that are coming up that need to get done. 
Uh, he's a full-bred golden retriever, and that's one of the smartest dog breeds in the world. Um, I, I guess I just don't know what else to say. I just, I felt like I had to update you guys. I didn't want you guys thinking that I just quit my YouTube channel. It's just, I hit a big dry spot. I mean, Nana passed away November 16th, and that's not fair. I mean, two of the, one, two of the very closest people in my family passed away within 15 days of each other and I didn't even have time to barely grieve about my dad so I yeah I mean I guess I just don't know what else to say except stay strong and Nana and Dad, I miss you, and I'll see you again someday. All right, guys. Uh, sorry for getting a little emotional. Um, it's just it's a pretty sore subject to talk about. Um, I bet it is with anybody. So uh, thank you for watching the video, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.